Hello, my name is Amy Gurgis, and I would like to welcome Richard Town. Uh, we are both uh, tax preparers with FIDA, and and I'll let I'll let Rich talk a little bit more about why we're here. Okay. Uh, so welcome again to okay, Community Richard. Conversations, uh, the second episode. Uh, Amy and I are both volunteers uh, with VITA, which is, stands for Volunteers Income Tax Assistance. We're not professionals. We do this for fun. And uh, we'll just have a conversation tonight about what our organization does and why we do it and just where you can get some help yourselves uh, for doing taxes, if you're doing it yourself or if you need some, some assistance for someone else to do it for you. Okay. So, Amy, first, how did you get into this? Well, approximately 16 or 17 years ago, a good friend of mine who was already involved with FIDA and really liked it um, asked me if I'd be interested in helping people with free tax preparation. And at the time, I was pretty involved with my career and uh, job and other obligations. And even though I liked preparing taxes, I always thought that when I retired, I would, I would somehow find a way to do them, and she kept, she kept <laughs> persisting, persisting, and, and finally, uh, two years later, I decided to pursue or find more information, and at the time, a man named Mark Dunn, who was running the program out of the Meriden Public Library. Uh, I spoke with him, and um, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. Um, and I've been doing it for 15 years. You know, the tax law changes every year. The equipment that we have every year changes. It's always an improvement. And I just really enjoy it. I just really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, myself, it was, I got into Vita about eight or nine years ago. I, we all seem to lose track of when we started. Because exactly. it, it, it gets into the haze of history. That's, that's true. Um, but I, I used to do it professionally. Um, then I moved back to Connecticut and I was looking for a volunteer activity that dealing with people, I like finances, so I was like, okay, let's let's just try this out. So again I found Mark and started with at the, the library. Um, I think what the reason I keep on coming back is is the group that we have. Uh, Absolutely. we Absolutely. We interact a lot with each other. We have mm -hmm. a it's, it's it's a very fun time. And I, mm -hmm. I know it sounds strange you know, playing with money and finances and taxes and numbers. But we do have a lot of fun. We we help each other out a lot because, as you were saying, you know, tax laws just change. Even though you and I each have hundreds of hours of doing this every year, there's you, you just run into something that's that's new and different, and it's fun to figure out what's the you know what's the best solution for the client. Right. Um, so that's that's the primary reason I come back, and and I figure each time I'm helping someone, that's saving them a lot of time and money exactly. because either they're going to be doing it themselves. They'll get frustrated because they don't, you know, they do it once a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're doing it, each of us, you know, 100, 100 times each uh, return. You know, we become experts. We can get through it quickly. So um, I, I have a lot of fun doing it. And you see a lot of people that you don't, don't you know, that you don't see on a, on a daily basis. You see a cross-section of, of the community. Um, I like it being in Meriden Library because that, that's a, it's a great facility. Mm -hmm. We have you know the space that you know I can't say enough about what they do for us in regards to giving us the space and right. and, and and the resources and um, just the, the commitment they've given to you know the vital over the years is 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 is, is, is phenomenal. They are very accommodating mm -hmm. um, as far as. You know, giving like you said, giving us the space and um, helping us with, you know, when the weather closings, you know, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But um, but you mentioned providing a service and a cross section of people. One of the things that I like about um, returning year after year is that the same clients return year after year mm -hmm. because they've learned to trust us and they have learned a lot of the um, a lot of the tax laws, maybe not in depth like we do, but they start understanding mm -hmm. the concept of different things about taxation. And um, one of the other things is that 
a lot of the clients don't realize that we are volunteers, that we do not get paid for what we do, that we do it because we enjoy doing it, mm -hmm. and it's our way of giving back to the community. And, um, you know, that, that makes me feel good mm -hmm. because we're not charging them for a service and we're not getting paid for a service. Mm -hmm. So it kind of works both ways. The other thing I want to mention is regarding the tax law changes is that, um, you know, we are, even though we're volunteers, I consider us professionals because we do have to get certified every year. Mm -hmm. You know, there are several levels of certification, basic and advanced, and um, the advanced are, the advanced certification are for not necessarily complicated situations, but you know, a little more in depth than than a very simple return would would require. And of course, there are situations that we cannot uh, mm -hmm. that we cannot handle mm -hmm. because they are outside of the scope of VITA. But in those situations, we're required to refer them to a, a tax professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Most of the people that that work with you know with us, in our either in our prior lives or our current lives, some of them are indeed paid professionals, right. and uh, they do this kind of like a, a pro bono basis to to give back to the community, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, for those that are uncomfortable doing their own taxes, but really don't need. To the expense and the time of going to a paid professional. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's how I, I view our niche. Mm -hmm. I also like the idea of that I'm actually doing some education. So when we're done with the, doing the return, it's not just here you go. It's like I'm, we're walking them through, okay, this is how we calculated it. So they understand how the number came to be. So, you know, the refund is X. Well, this is, there's, they have at least have some understanding of why, why it got to X. And so maybe next year, they'll, they may change their financial behavior a bit mm -hmm. to be in a better position. Um, so, what, I, I don't know about you, but what gets my goat is someone that's you know, changed a job, had a 401k, and then got the money out of from the 401k, and then spent it. Spent it, and then the tax bill they see at the end of the year. Right. Can you explain a little bit how that? works, you know, how, how, you know, how do you counsel someone that's uh, gone through, well, either going to be changing jobs or after the, you know, after the fact of, like, well, don't do that again. <laughs> well, it's kind of a sensitive area mm -hmm. because, um, again, we're not in the profession of financial planning, but you have a bit of a financial background, as do I, so kind of outside what what we do at VITA is, well, here's my experience mm -hmm. with a 401k, and yes, I've changed jobs, and I've transferred my 401k or rolled it over mm -hmm. or did a direct transfer, whatever the case may be, in order to avoid penalties and paying tax on that money. Mm -hmm. And what I try and do, because like I said, I don't want to um, step, say any, step yeah, beyond, step beyond the mm -hmm. VITA scope, um, but try and relate it to mm -hmm. personal experience. And maybe next time they do something like that, maybe seek out the help of a financial advisor or maybe seek out the help of the personnel department mm -hmm. who handles right. those sort mm -hmm. of things. Um, yeah, the last thing that I, I hate to see is when a taxpayer has a surprise that mm -hmm. they weren't expecting. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. last evening, which was our first night for this season, um, I had a client who did not have any health insurance. Now, as we know, the Affordable Care Act, which went into effect January 1st, 2014, um, greatly affected people's tax situation. If you didn't have private health mm -hmm. insurance, then you had the ability to to purchase. purchase it through mm -hmm. the uh, marketplace. And last year, the, the penalties for not having health insurance were minimal, minimal. but they were there. Mm -hmm. um, this year, the penalties have increased. Mm -hmm. And so this particular client had a uh, penalty of $600 and change. And needless to say, she was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. she, she knew there was a penalty. So. 
I try and counsel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that type of situation that you know you might want to consider looking into insurance mm -hmm. because not just for avoiding the penalty but just to have insurance to have insurance <laughs> because yeah. as we know health care mm -hmm. is very expensive yeah. so so trying to mm -hmm. to counsel you know you, mm -hmm. you, next year you can do things differently yep. and you can have a better result mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I want to mention is that um, you know when somebody is caught off guard for whatever um, you know that 401k mm -hmm. example um, when people compare their tax situation with somebody else's uh -huh. for example um, my friend got four four thousand dollars back and I'm only getting this well you know you're in a different world it's a different set of situation and you, you just each client is different exactly and, and where they are at that particular time determines what their tax liability is that's so, exactly correct um, yes your friends can help you but unless they understand ta the tax law um, it's you know just speaking through you know through their hat right you know another area that I you know we've, we've helped some people is you know a lot of people have either a second job or self-employed in something and you know the first year they come in and then they see okay well I've had this you know, I got this income well what expenses did you have to go against it well I sort of but I don't know and so <laughs> and so you know they're gonna pay taxes on all, sure. the, all the cash income they, they came in. Sure. Well, and we talked to them through. It's like, okay, well, next year, keep track of how many miles you drove. Exactly. Keep track of, you know, the supplies you bought. And so the, you know, the following year, we were able to get them into a better yes. tax position. Yes. So, you know, that, I like that helping people on an ongoing basis. Exactly. Our site coordinator, who is Ken Beaudry, mm -hmm. um, who is excellent. He mm -hmm. has taken over the role from Mark Dunn, um, and he just has taken the ball and run with mm -hmm. it. Um, he is very well organized. Um, he he communicates with all the prior preparers, mm -hmm. and um, he's very active in recruiting new people. In fact, that's one of the things that every year he says, if you know anybody that wants to join, mm -hmm. let them know we're here. Mm -hmm. and, Believe me, I don't know about you. I've tried to, you know, between friends and mm -hmm. colleagues, mm -hmm. and people just aren't interested for whatever mm -hmm. reason. But I think it takes a certain mm -hmm. type. So, say I was a client, a potential client, how would I go about finding a, a resource? You know, wh wh when does the Vita at the library uh, happen? Well, it's funny that you ask that because. The, uh, the notice goes into the newspaper. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in Meriden, so I'm assuming it's in the record journal. Mm -hmm. The telephone number is posted, and the appointments just start being made mm -hmm. well before the season starts. The season starts. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Well, the clients that I saw last night had made their appointments mm -hmm. probably weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They know to look for mm -hmm. it. Uh, do, you, do you have any knowledge of how the... Uh, well, How the notices go out? It's, it is published in the paper. Yeah. If you happen to be in the library on the nights that we're open, you can go in, come in and, and sign up for an appointment at that point in time. And we do we do do, take a, do a few walk-ins. Right. You know, but obviously, you know, people that have an appointment have a priority. Right. But usually, if someone's there when we open, we're able to squeeze them in. You know, at some point through the night. We you obviously don't want to sit and wait forever. Right. So we'll tell you that if there's a, a stack of people in front of you, but uh, to give an estimate, uh, but through February and March, we'll be there Monday nights and Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. and then in April it's only Wednesday nights, and then Saturdays all the way through the through the season. So Monday and Wednesday, uh, starting around 5:30 officially, but typically we're setting up at five. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone is, wants to be a walk-in, you know, we suggest you show up at five o'clock, and we'll try to squeeze you in as quickly as possible. Um, Might I add? Sure. One of the um, we have two people mm -hmm. who uh, manage the appointments. The flow. Mm -hmm. And they do a mm -hmm. great, great job of estimating for the walk-ins, mm -hmm. of estimating whether we're 
going to be able to accommodate those walk-ins that night. Mm -hmm. If not, they'll Take offer a, to make an appointment. Mm -hmm. But um, but they are they have been phenomenal mm -hmm. in aiding mm -hmm. the flow of clients in and out mm -hmm. of there. And you know that's that's not an easy task, mm -hmm. especially when we are at our busiest mm -hmm. time. Like we said earlier, last night was our was our de debut, <laughs> our debut night mm -hmm. for the season. And normally, at least my experience in the past has been that the first night is pretty slow. Well, my but experience has been it's pretty pretty busy. Maybe well because things yeah often I, th fall I think apart. <laughs> yeah now, well I think we're also starting earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think in the past we didn't start okay. until February, right. so now people, people are, are getting all their documents, documents. Whereas it's still January, mm -hmm. so I think some people are still waiting mm -hmm. for documents, mm -hmm. but. Um, I'm sorry I cut you off. That's okay. You were going to say something. Yeah, uh, in regards to appointments, you know, usually by mid-March, the end of March, you know, we, we end up getting booked up. Yeah. So um, sooner is better than later. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, someone that hasn't done their taxes for a while and they're feeling a little antsy? What can we do? Well, we can, uh, we have the capability and the IRS Actually, at our site, uh, we have the software to go back three years, mm -hmm. including the current tax year. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't done your taxes since 2012, I'm sorry, 13, mm -hmm. um, we can, yes, <laughs> we can, yes, but we don't count with our fingers yeah. there, just, just to <laughs> clarify. My calculator just to me. clarify. <laughs> um, so we have the software to produce those returns. Mm -hmm. Now, um, but those are, you're allowed to do that mm -hmm. um, if you're getting a refund. If you're, if you expect a refund for anything prior to that, the IRS will not Get accommodate you. you. Mm -hmm. However, if, if you, you owe, owe money, you um, still the, owe. <laughs> I, the IRS wants to hear from you regardless of how long mm -hmm. ago. And something that just popped into my mind, I wanted to mention that uh, with the VITA program, mm -hmm. Uh, there is an income limitation mm -hmm. of 52000 annually, mm -hmm. um, and that's, I believe that's relatively new, or if it's not, it wasn't really... It wasn't enforced. It wasn't really enforced because... Um, but we re our capacity... We got, were able, yes, yeah. because we were able to... Um, but now as more people find out about us, right. we had reached the limit of, of... Right. So we had to start drawing some lines. So you know. it is geared toward... Uh, the program is geared Middle toward income, toward lower income. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason being is that the more income you have... Um, the more, you, more complicated your return is going to be, and more generally, likely it's going to be outside of our generally scope. Generally speaking, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and if you need um, professional assistance, mm -hmm. then um, you might have you know a better ability to to to, to, to get that mm -hmm. expertise. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too is with lower income um, clients may not necessarily have access to computers, mm -hmm. and in this day and age. Um, the IRS really wants you to electronically file mm -hmm. because it's easier for the client, it's faster yeah. for the client, More accurate. and the IRS gets the information sooner mm -hmm. so they can process your retur return quicker um, because the IRS, who used to assist people in mm -hmm. repairing, they, repairing they, returns they the at their site, don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a tax question about your particular return, the IRS offices are open, but they do not provide tax assistance mm -hmm. as far as preparing returns anymore. We're it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are it, or um, a AARP. AARP also mm -hmm. assist in that, mm -hmm. um, and or you can go to a paid preparer, mm -hmm. and when or do software uh, or do off. software, mm -hmm. correct. And when I have a client come in and said that, um, you know, we. We process their return for free. They'll say, when I went to another preparer last year, they charged me whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't like to hear that for a simple mm -hmm. return. Mm -hmm. I That's what makes me feel mm -hmm. good is when I'm able to prepare the return. Um, Sa and saving, have them saving them money. Save that money mm -hmm. and either mm -hmm. put it into savings, put it into their 401k, do whatever with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I had a thought along that, and it just escaped mm -hmm. my yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be I'm yeah. going to be ready for the yeah. ARP <laughs> program pretty soon with yeah. the senior yeah. moments. It's, I want to tell you, you know, my favorite client that I had. He came in. I did his return, and he made a statement that, well, I'm getting a lot back, a lot more than I had in the past. Yeah. And so, okay, well, let's let's see why. And I went and looked in the history, and it's like, well, we're now claiming your brother. And you could have claimed your brother all along, but you never told us this before. Okay. So, did his return. We went in back and amended his previous three-year return, three years worth. I'll bet he loved you. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, he that's very loved me. So he come, you know, he, he comes, very loved. He you. loved very loved yeah. me. So yeah, you know, he he comes back all the time now to us. You know, he, you know we've been That's doing great. this return all, all along, but he gave us the information we needed to get him into a better situation. And those are the stories mm -hmm. that I love to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, not not everybody Cause, has. Cause that's a life changing event for him. Of course it mm -hmm. is. Of course it is. And he's entitled to every penny. That, exactly. It's just that his returns were not properly Before. prepared. Mm -hmm. So, so um, in that case, you know, where was the the mistake? Was it was it us? Was it him? You know. Who cares? We, we fixed the problem. Right. Um, That's another thing I wanted to bring up about um, errors. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the um, one of the programs we have on with with the whole Vita program is that every return that we prepare is undergoes a quality Twice. review. Everyone looks at it's looked by at least two separate people entirely. Yep. Yes. So um, you know we always give a copy of the return to the client but the return is reviewed mm -hmm. um, because we're human. Mm -hmm. We make errors, not many of them, mm -hmm. but we do make mm -hmm. errors. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that when the client leaves that mm -hmm. they've, they've had the best possible re experience, th experience and, and, exactly, and, and, yeah. all from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's really important. Mm -hmm. It's really important for... Um, you know, a lot of times people will try to leave before the review, and so we're like, like no. I, first of all, it's required, right. but second of all, it's for your own good. It's yep. for your own yep. protection mm -hmm. because because we take pride in what mm -hmm. we do, mm -hmm. and we don't want you to have any problems down right. the road because yeah, of an error. Yeah, because yeah, it's, yeah, it's very simple as you're you know typing a number into transpose a number. Oh, absolutely. And, and we're yeah. looking at a lot of numbers. We're looking at a lot of numbers, and it's very difficult to check yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's just the reality. So having a second set of eyes going through it line by line and you, basically you're walking through it a second time with the client so they get a, a deeper understanding of, of how the calculations are done now what's what's the one thing that you dislike the most about preparing taxes I, I have mine in mind so I just when you were talking about transposing numbers it made me think well, the fact that my, my eyes start to glaze over by the end of the night <laughs> and the chairs that we sit on are a little uncomfortable you think so I think so Okay. But, um, I don't know. That's a good question. Give me your uh, give me your answer. And the I'll one thing the one thing that I would really like to see changed is have a standardized W oh, two form. form. Oh. We see every mm -hmm. size mm -hmm. shape. the The letters yeah. are so small. I've gotten to bring a magnifying mm -hmm. glass because there's one. I don't know who produces mm -hmm. them, but. The, the I mean they're all they're all required well, to have, have the, the same, same boxes fields, with right. the same numbers, but, but, but they're, they're in every different yeah. place. Yeah. And like you said, that, that's a that's a tax preparer problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I would at least we're not seeing handwritten ones anymore. Um, yeah. not that often. Very rarely, yeah. so. very rarely. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's been my that's been my wish. Mm -hmm. my, that's my wish list. So and so that's, so what else as a client should I bring to you besides? Four different W-2s are all in a different format. You should bring your W-2s. Um, if you've, basically, for simplicity's sake, I'll start with this. Anything you get in the mail that says important tax document mm -hmm. enclosed, bring that with you. Mm -hmm. um, generally, that could, but is not limited to your W-2s. Mm -hmm. The W-2 is the wage reporting statement mm -hmm. that would be uh, generated from any job that you mm -hmm. held, where um, wage, uh, mm -hmm. where a wages were earned, yeah, and, and then, income and tax, and, and other deductions. And think back to like the previous January when you got your last paycheck from the previous company. Exactly. And so, or, exactly. or, or, a, 
or bonus or a travel expense or you know some check that get carried over from a right. previous employer. Right. Sometimes clients forget those and, and come in too soon. They they do, mm -hmm. and um, just like we may we're human and make mm -hmm. mistakes. A company that you work for at the beginning of the year may not have sent you a W-2 or, or may not have sent it on time. Or gone to an old address. Precisely. Mm -hmm. If you move, mm -hmm. exactly. Just um, You were talking about record keeping earlier. Mm -hmm. That's you know, just a good thing to keep in mind mm -hmm. is where have I been this past year? Mm -hmm. I mean, not just physically, but... Um, you know, as far mm -hmm. as um, yeah, you, you jobs, could, uh, you could have a, a one weekend gig where you're you know working for someone else. You know, precisely. Yeah. In which case, you would get a 1099 mm -hmm. miss, mm -hmm. which is miscellaneous. Um, so you would want to bring any um, W twos. Mm -hmm. If you received a 1099 int, which is for interest or dividends. Dividend. Um, if you're retired, Tired. you would get a 1099 r. Social Security statement. Social Security statement. Um, like and, I said. Yeah, any other income statement you get. Exactly. Yeah, right. uh, and a good rule of thumb is, like I said, that it, important yep. tax document mm -hmm. involved. Um, if you own a car bring, in the state yeah. of Connecticut, yep. bring in your car tax mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. um, if you own a home, mm -hmm. and this is not a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, if you own a home, uh, you probably... And again, it's not a hard and fast rule. You probably have a mortgage, mm -hmm. and you pay real estate taxes. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, in most cases, you can what we call itemize your deductions, mm -hmm. right. which means that the IRS allows you to, to use more, more of your expenses to mm -hmm. offset your mm -hmm. tax mm -hmm. uh, liability mm -hmm. than than using a standard, uh, standard deduction, mm -hmm. which the IRS provides. Yeah. So, um, but in those cases, we do have a questionnaire that we have you fill, fill out, out when you first come mm -hmm. to um, your appointment. Yep. So that gives us an overall right. picture. And if you forget something, we're going we're to send you, you know, we'll right. send you home. If and it's to your benefit or if it's not to your benefit, yep. just to ensure so that it's we're doing an accurate, thorough mm -hmm. return. Mm -hmm. But, and we do occasionally have people come back, but that's because, you know, we need more information. Mm -hmm. yep. And, um, but usually, I'd say 95% you know, of the people are in and out. In, in one exactly, yep. exactly. Like yeah. I had one last evening that the return was completely prepared, but we needed to see her daughter's Social Security card. Yep. So you also need to bring your Social, Social Security card and, and a photo um, ID. Yep. And um, so that, um, that will pretty much cover it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think so. But, but when we do the interview, um, the intake process, mm -hmm. Jill who uh, and Beth, who talk to the clients um, over the phone, she'll let people know. Remind them what to bring. Correct. Yep. Okay. Well, I think our, we're getting close to the, the, our time here. And uh, I don't know, I had a lot of fun talking here. And oh. Uh, I, it's, 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 we're, we're tax nerds, but... <laughs> But well, we, I, I prefer not to use the nerd, but I, I know you're passionate mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. I know I'm passionate mm -hmm. about it. And like you said earlier, we do have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, we take, at least, I know, I, I, I can speak for both of us, that we do take what we do seriously, seriously. Mm -hmm. but we also have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I know at the end of the year, we like to celebrate a successful season mm -hmm. with the uh, the banquet, which I love putting together mm -hmm. and having a little presentation. But um, it's it's a great group of mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. that we work with, and and we're here to help. And we really are. Mm -hmm. It's a great service, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that we both we both joined. Mm -hmm. So well, thanks, Amy, and uh, thank you, and uh, take care. Nice talking with you. You too. Okay, Rich, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. At the Meriden Public Library. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay.